um, if it was not for the grace or for the love or for the mercy of the Lord, where will we be today? I want everyone to search their hearts that if it was not for the love, for the unmerited favor, and, the, and also the mercy of the living God, where will we be today? You know, the enemy wants to push you and they want you to fall. The Satan wants to you to miss your eternal salvation. But if it was not for the mercy, for the love, and also for the grace of the Lord, where will we be today? I want to ask everybody here in the church today, are you here in person or are you here in spirit? You see, anybody that's in spirit is also in person. But basically, there are people that come to church as a matter of routine. Yes? And there are people that come to church because they fervently seek after the salvation of God. I want to believe everyone here today what is here to seek the salvation of God. You know, if you had to make a poll and say, uh, uh, Salmoner or preacher, what topic should, we, should you preach? In Celestial Church, the number one would be victory. Number two would be blessing. Abby, anything else I miss? Victory, play, blessing, and prosperity. But today, the lessons we read, the two lessons we read, you know, when I first read it, it was all gloom and doom. But then I now realize there's, there's good news in the cemetery. When Christ died for our sins, he died in sorrow, in disappointment, but he rose in glory. He rose in victory. He rose with salvation. So I now see that there's always silver lining. There's always good news. Sometimes when it seems to be bad news. Because God is the one that makes uh, uh, sense out of nonsense. Hallelujah. If you read the first uh, lesson, you know, Zephaniah, you know, we, 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 it's only a three chapter. Prophet Zephaniah was talking about the day of the Lord is near. You know, uh, if you look at the first and the second lesson, they were both essentially talking about the same thing. Hallelujah. The day of the Lord is near. Um, the word of the Lord told us that um, God was saddened because he made man. Because every day of their life is filled with what? Evil. It's filled with what? Evil. You know, you don't have to take a dagger or a knife to do evil. Just by the word of your mouth, saying bad things, untruthful things about others is doing evil. Doing fraud is doing evil. You know, stabbing somebody in the back is doing evil. Being able to help somebody and refusing to help them is doing evil. Many, many different things. But these are the nicest things that you can even think about when you think about the evil that men do. You ever seen people that you, you bless them with money and they take this same money, they take it to your arbalist and say, this person should have given me more. Make their, their journey the, the hardest way possible. If you happen to be in a position, I've always wondered, to be in the, possession, in the position of God, to be able to see the inner, inner, inner hearts of men, you will, not be, you will not do anything but just be saddened that you said, let us make man in our own image. Hallelujah. In the first lesson, it addresses two basic things. The first one was idolatry, right? Idolatry. You know, if you, if, you are, if you think about idolatry, it comes in many different fashion, many different forms. You could have, you could have um, your car, and that's what you worship. You can have your child, and that's what you worship. You can have your job, that's what you worship. You can have your hobby, and that's what you worship. Many different ways that people um, practice idol idolatry. It's not only when you bow to the Baal or bow to the you know, to the, uh, you know, the, the, the small gods that you're processing, you're practicing idolatry. The second one is complacency, preoccupation with other things, putting God second, complacency. That's what the first lesson talks about. But the basic 
theme of the first lesson says the day of the Lord is drawing near. Second lesson in the book of Luke chapter 21. Basically, that was talking about kingdom of God is near and at hand. So you can see the connection between the first and the second lesson. They're basically telling us the same thing along the same theme so that we can stay focused. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's words would always stand try and true. And then also it talks about the coming of Jesus Christ in the clouds. The coming of Jesus Christ in the clouds. So I, I talked about good news and bad news. Let's talk about the bad news first. The, 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 the lessons read to us today was talking about what would happen, what would become of those sinful the sinners, all those people that are not living in the way of the Lord. That is the bad news. And he said that the Lord is coming to make a sacrifice. And according to the scripture, the Bible tells us that he wasn't going to make a sacrifice out of goats, rams, or cows. He was going to make a sacrifice out of sinners. Hallelujah. But then, you know, according to that uh, parable of the tears, it says, let them grow together. It says at the end, we shall gather the tears. And we shall do what? We shall burn them. And he said, those good fruits, the, the wheat, we shall gather them. And he said, gather them into my barn. Hallelujah. That is the bad news. And I pray that none of us will go into perdition in Jesus' name. I pray that none of us will become one of the, 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 the people that God will use for sacrifice in those days. We shall all triumph and see the salvation of the Lord. We shall look up, see Christ coming in the sky, and we shall, we shall see our salvation coming. That is the good news. So I'd like, to, I'd like to focus more on the good news today. The book of Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 says, See, I am coming soon. He said, my rewards are with me. To do what? To repay according to everyone's work. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the life, the beginning and the end. He said, blessed are those who wash their robes. Not, I'm not talking about Sutana now. Their spiritual robes. Blessed are those who wash their robes so they, they, will, they will have the right to the tree of life and may, may enter in the city by the gates. I am coming soon. The good news is that Jesus is coming soon. The Bible tells us that he will come in like a thief in the night. Nobody knows. If anybody tells you that Christ is coming on January 1st or January 21st, they are lying. You need to be imbibed in Christ. You need to live your life with Christ so that you are so familiar with the real thing that the fake thing doesn't distract you. Hallelujah. You know when you know something so well that they bring the they bring they bring the the the, 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 the bad thing or the fake thing, you know it right away. You know, I always tell people that the definition of authentic is something that's often copied or imitated but never equaled. That is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Lord is a loving God. Our God is a gracious God. Our God is full of mercy. You know, whenever you look at the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation, God always deals with two things. He deals with love for those who love him. And he has justice for those who does not love him. Church, I am, I am pleading to everyone today. Make a decision today to make a turn towards Christ. You know, the Bible talks about the end time, when Christ will come. But the day that you close your eyes and you know more, that is the day of your salvation. You don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Hallelujah. I pray that all of us will make a commitment to go home differently than we came in today. And to be in that situation where you say, Christ, I accept you as my personal Christ and Lord, that I want to be with you 
I want to do your will. I want to be in that day of sacrifice, not those that are be used that will be used for sacrifice of God. Hallelujah. It would be so sad if you spend all your life coming to church every Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, and you become the sacrifice of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> the day of judgment will soon come. And when it comes, they're not going to ask you, which church did you go? Which parish did you attend? What was your rank in church? What was your duty in church? They're not going to ask you those things. They're not going to ask you how many times you came to church on, 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 in a year. How much did you donate in church? It will be your handiwork because the Bible says, I will come to repay according to everyone's work. Hallelujah. So you need to search yourself. You need to ask yourself the question, am I doing the will of God? You see, um, back, back if you're a student, when you were a student, you went to school, and they tell you there's going to be an exam. If you have taken the time to study, you feel this sense of confidence. I am ready. When they come in, I used to have uh, some teachers, they do pop, they call it pop quiz. You see, pop quiz, the teacher doesn't tell you when the quiz is going to come in. He comes into class and says, guess what? Today, class, we're going to have a pop quiz. And when he says there's a pop quiz, you better be ready. Yes? Jesus is coming with his pop quiz. And when he comes with his pop quiz, nobody knows the time. Nobody knows the place. Nobody knows the situation. Those that will be lucky to be alive when rapture comes, when Christ comes in the cloud, lucky, be, you know, glory be to them. And good luck to them, whether they're on the sacrifice side or on the good news side. Hallelujah. You have to live every single day as if it's your last day on earth. Hallelujah. There is no repentance in the grave. Whatever it is you do, whenever you do an exam, I go back to school. When they say, pens up, what does that mean? There's no more writing. So, you know, I, I've seen, you know, my mom was here in the U.S. She was talking to two of my sisters. And all of a sudden, she just went, that was the last time she was able to talk to anybody. She was able to do anything or make any corrections. Hallelujah. You may be talking to somebody today, and later on they call you in the evening and say the person is no more. You may be talking to somebody today, and that person has a heart attack and dies instantly. But you need to make sure that when they say pens up, you are past the exam. Hallelujah. In five. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. But Father, count us among life eternal bequest. So that in that day when they count them, Father, count me amongst. Father, count me amongst. Uh -uh. Father, count me. Say to your neighbor, Father, count me amongst. We will not be part of the sacrifice in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for that inspirational uh, hymn. Justice and love. Justice and love. God has both in his coffers. If you do his will, he will shower you with love. If you don't do his will, he's an, he's an uh, they call him uh, something fire. What is it? A consuming fire. The Lord will not consume us in Jesus' name. He will not consume our children in Jesus' name. He will consume the Satan desire in our life in Jesus' name. Brethren, we say this all the time. Today, I want you to make a special commitment that says, Lord, I want to do your will. Lord, I want to do your will. Lord, let me see your salvation. Lord, let me see your salvation. This is a serious 
this is a serious matter. It is not a joke. You know, <laughs> if you've ever been in a situation where your life flashes in your eyes, eh, where you think, you say, you think to yourself, you say, self, am I going to survive or am I going to die? That is when you have what they call life moments, where you start to think and say, you know, everything that I hold there, they're actually vanity. Do you know there are millionaires, people that have money, they cannot even eat, they feed them with tubes. Some of them, when they have to go to the toilet, they go inside the bag, they can't even get up. They are even alive. As if they are not alive. That is not our portion. We are all able-bodied. Do amendments. Make changes to your life. You know, like I said, if you, if you spend your time brooding over the real thing, nobody can, nobody can, can, can trick you with the fake things. You know, I, and I, I always tell people that you go to church and you think that you're going to learn everything from church. It's almost like somebody that goes to school. You don't learn everything from school. You have to take that book, the Bible. You may not, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of this. I don't read it every day. But I try my best to read as much as I can and seek knowledge and understanding. Because if you have God in your life, you know his words, nobody can, nobody that can distract you. Nobody can, can tell you the fake stuff. That is why you see in churches, people are telling, pastors are telling women, you don't need to wear underwear to church. They're telling women. It, it is true. It happens in, it happens in Ghana. Hallelujah. You see, if you know, if you know the word of God, if it's not in the Bible, it is not proper. In G uh, hallelujah. You see, have you seen people eating grass because their pastor tells them to eat grass? You see people, pastor walking on them because the pastor says he must walk on them? Where does the scripture support that? You see, these are the little things and little ways that people miss the road to salvation. The Bible said wide is the road that leads to perdition, but narrow is the gate that leads to everlasting life. But don't let anybody fool you. Don't let anybody distract you. Your book, God gave us this, this book as a manual. It should be something that guide our ways. It should be something that guide our journey into salvation. This is not something you should count on somebody to tell you how. You need to, uh, you need to equip yourself with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Lord. Hallelujah. So how are you preparing to be ready when the Lord comes? You know, one of my sisters in the church, I think she's back there, Sister Omni, she sang one song one time I never forget. And he says, will you be ready when the Lord shall come? I shall be ready. I shall be ready. I shall be ready when the Lord shall come. I shall be ready. I shall be ready. I shall be ready when the Lord shall come. Brethren in Christ, will you be ready? It's easy for us to sing, but you need to now translate this into your day-to-day -day life. And be asking yourself every day, will I be ready when the Lord comes? When he shows up in the cloud? He said, the handiwork that he found with me, is it the one that I think will get me into his salvation. Hallelujah. We are just strangers in this world. Amen? We are just strangers in this world. We're just passing by. A lot of people think this is where their life is. We're just like a passenger in a bus that's driving by. Everybody has a bus stop. And the bus stop shall take us home in Jesus' name. Brethren in Christ, we have sang a song this, uh, this uh, morning. And that song was uh, from hymn 22. 
He says, the holy God of Bethel has seen us. Wash us what? Wash us clean with the blood of his son. We are all sinners. Nobody's perfect, including me, everybody else. But we need to be asking for God's forgiveness. And, you know, every time I ask for God's for forgiveness, I always ask him for the spirit not to sin anymore. Because this is not a journey that we can walk ourselves. We need God in our lives. We need God to help us in that journey because nobody is perfect. Even the Bible tells us that Moses talked with God directly one-on-one, -on -one, but he still find a way to not see the promised land, to, to not get to the promised land. The Lord showed him the promised land. So we have to pray that as we are going by, we should not falter. We should not fall. That we will make it in Jesus' name. All of us will make it in Jesus' name. But it starts by you today working towards your salvation. Salvation is an individual thing. It's not like me and my wife will go into salvation. You work on your own salvation. You know, even the shepherd, as he is, is working diligently towards his own salvation. Even though he's trying to help us, all of us, so that we can make it. So you yourself... You have to make a personal commitment. Not to, nothing with your child, your husband, or whatever, or your wife. But it's an individual thing. Because I believe when you get there, God is going to say, Adayo, where's your wife? I pray my wife is standing next to me by our own handiwork in Jesus' name. We, none of us will be left behind in Jesus' name. We shall serve God. We shall see the reward of serving God. There are many people that will serve God and they're serving in vain. You know, I would say that people, some people even in church, they think they're working for God. They're actually working against God. They think they're working, you know, there's this, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, prophet in, in the Bible. He was not supposed to go to the altar. He went to the altar. What happened to him? He got consumed. Hallelujah. In his mind, he thought he was working for God. But he was not following the instructions of God. So he was working against God. And God, you know what I said is the God, he deals with love and justice. Instant justice. That would not be our portion in Jesus' name. God would always find a reason to forgive us of our sins. Whenever we go wrong, the Lord will put us right in Jesus' name. In as much as the Lord sees your heart and he knows that you're inside of your heart, you are determined. You are absolutely determined. To find salvation. We will not miss the road in Jesus' name. You need to get with God before his judgment comes. Before his judgment comes. Like I said, his judgment doesn't mean the day that Jesus is coming. But the day you close your eyes and you lose your life in this world, that is when your judgment has come. There is, from that point on, you go on the journey all by yourself. Nobody going with you. You know, I always hear Oh, I love my husband. I love my wife. I've never seen a husband or wife that say, oh, you must, you must bury me with my husband or bury me with my wife. The moment you're done, even if you're in the house too long, they say, take this thing out of here. Praise the Lord. Nobody goes with nobody else. There was one time in uh, Ileife. They have these people they call Abba for those that are not Nigerians. They always designate somebody that would enjoy and chop life to the fullest. But the day the king died, he must die with the king. I think when the... <laughs> <laughs> Where the uh, I, I, I laugh. What is it? She, what she do? I when he died. What happened to the Yabo Baku? He disappeared. They, they, they found him. I don't know what they did with him when they found him. Praise the Lord. But he did not willingly put himself up for sacrifice, did he? So the day you go, you are going alone. If you go and you are going with Christ, you are going with Christ. But if you are going and you're not going with Christ, Satan and his host of, uh, host of uh, devil angels, the entourage, they are waiting. They are waiting for the arrival of one of their own that's going to partition. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. God wants to redeem and restore lives. He said that he pay, uh, um, the God does not want the death of sinners, but only so they can repent. Hallelujah. He is not, he doesn't derive enjoyment from us dying or going into hell. That's why he sent his only son to die on this cross so that his blood can be an atonement for our sins. Hallelujah. 
Don't let that sacrifice of his only son, don't let it go to waste. Brethren in Christ, I say it once again. Make a personal commitment today to say, I am not going into perdition. Say to your neighbor, I am not going to perdition. Uh, you're not saying it convincingly. I am not going into perdition. None of us will go into perdition in Jesus' name. God derives enjoyment from rejoicing with his children who have been redeemed by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. You know, this is, very, very, this is not a very lively topic. If I was, if I was preaching about, about blessing, if I was preaching about victory, if I was preaching about victory, victory and all this stuff, everybody gets excited, everybody gets animated. But this is the main domain. This is the reason why we come to church. The reason why we come to church is to seek the face of the Lord. Is to seek the face of the Lord and seek his salvation. That is our one single goal and focus in life. If you don't know it, you have missed the road. You are in the wrong place. You might as well be in a nightclub or be in front of television watching Donald Trump. Praise the Lord. Be Kamala Harris, whichever way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make your presence in the house of the Lord. Make it count. Make your presence in the face of the Lord. Make it count. The only way you can make it count is by doing his will. I cannot sit here and tell you all the things you should do, you should not do. We've been in church all of our lives. We've read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But you know what you're supposed to do. But it's just that we choose not to do them. Hallelujah. Yes. Fear God and do what? Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Every work shall be done what? Brought to judgment. Yes. With every secret thing. Whether it be good, whether it be bad. Thank you so much, my sister. As I'm wrapping up, I have a great news for you. Jesus is what? Coming. Ah, Jesus is what? Jesus is what? And when it comes, whether you, whether whichever way, the Lord will find us on the opposite side of the sacrifice in Jesus' name. Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? I will be ready. I will be ready. I shall be ready when the Lord has come. I will be quiet. I will be ready. I will be ready when the Lord shall come. Bless the house of the Lord.